Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 151. <laughs> I'm going there. I am. Declutter. I'm doing it. Declutter. But can I say, this vlog is the first of what I think will be a series of 10. I had a fantastic request and idea on Twitter that was expressed that, Tara, could you do a series of vlogs based around a single word? What a brilliant, fantastic idea that is. So I've looked at all the requests I've received from all our wonderful students at Flinders and our great friends around the world, and I found at least 10, I think, where I can take on your suggestion and feed it through a single word. So I feel a bit like a sort of Joy Division or New Order producer, like movement. But of course, today it is declutter. So this is very exciting. It's a really disturbing word. I think it's going to be the word of 2019 and it really captures, I think, a lot of the problems that are going on right on this planet at the moment, I think. But there are some useful hints and ideas, I think, for all of us. So we're going to start with the word declutter. And I think we're learning a lot about the challenges that exist in a sort of post-Trump post-Brexit kind of world, and instead of thinking about climate change and post-work and bizarre family structures, we're thinking about cleaning our houses. So I think we learn a lot about the culture there. And look, a lot of it's a bit naive, a lot of it's a bit sexist, but there is some interesting literature that explores decluttering for PhD students. Who knew? And there are doctor declutter services around the world. So I want to take this single word and enter into this debate, but particularly focus on you and your candidature to see if there's something of interest here, particularly at the start, I think, of 2019. So Marie Kondo is the guru really of decluttering and her work is deeply and profoundly problematic. And there are many ways I could get into this critique, but I'm just going to focus on two words in her discourse. Housewife, really? Housewife and joy. Joy. Now, she writes books assuming that women are house wives. Now, why that's such a problematic word? Look, a lot of our mothers accepted that word, grandmothers, I accept that. But the problem with housewife is it suggests women belong in the home, not in parliament, not in the workplace, not down a mine, and that a woman is defined by her marital status. So a wife, a, a person, a woman that is in a house and attached to a bloke. So that's why housewife is a bit of a problematic phrase. And if you doubt me, wonderful people out there, Think about the connotations around the word and phrase house husband. And like, that just sounds a bit weird and isn't that a bit weird? Think about that weirdness and therefore why we accept housewife so easily. Okay. Also, the way in which she configures women is that we are here to simply deliver pleasure to others. How fantastic for everyone out there. And if we can just discard enough objects in our lives then we're going to feel okay about ourselves. We're going to have joy. And she asks unbelievably that every single one of us hold an object in our house and assess its value by whether or not it brings us joy. Now, as you can see, I'm recording this vlog this week for reasons in my house. I'm sort of thinking about my laundry and my kitchen. And to be frank with you, most of the objects in my laundry and my kitchen do not fill me with joy. Uh, but I'm not bidding them or discarding them or sending them to others because they're required to do stuff. Not about joy, about doing stuff. So we're not dealing with relevance or importance or significance, which is important to a PhD. We're dealing with joy. So if it doesn't bring joy, kick it to the curb. Aren't we doing well? Now, this is some sort of weird 1950s femininity, you know, sort of the housewife. It feels a bit like it's out of sort of a sitcom, really. And some of it is sort of a weird late 1960s hippie femininity as well. And if you needed evidence for this, I'm just going to read you a quote. Get ready for this. Quote, while helping my clients tidy their homes and their offices, I stand in front of a mound of books, quite an image in itself, mound of books. They have piled on the floor and I 
clap my hands or gently stroke book covers. Although my clients look strangely at me at first, they are inevitably surprised how quickly and precisely they are able to choose after this. End of quote. That is a direct quote. Okay, so this is just bonkers. This is just bonkers. It's nonsense. Books are about knowledge. They are a gift to the world. They're not about joy. They're about knowledge. They're about intelligence. They're about intellectual generosity for the great scholars that live with us, but also precede us. Now, also think about Murray's other amazing punts into the universe. Quote, I've props today. Right, headphones, right? Headphones, right? Headphones? Her quote about headphones is, quote, using my headphones as speakers was a great solution for my simple lifestyle. I raised the volume loud enough to hear it without wearing them. End of quote. Okay, and the final quote, I'll just show you how crazy the times are in which we're living, is she uses this phrase, and yes, I do have a bra on my desk. It is a bra, and there's a reason this bra is on my desk rather than in, in my closet, because she states, quote, store bras like royalty, end of quote. Store bras like royalty. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know where to start. You put a little tiara on them. It's all happening. So this is madness, right? Work is incredibly hard. Relationships are incredibly hard. Managing a household while in full-time work is incredibly difficult. As I've often said to you guys in the past in these vlogs, I'm about 30 hours behind in housework most weeks. That's what's called having a full-time job. So really joy is the least of our worries, ladies and gentlemen. So this declutter thing, this minimalism thing has become a big deal, but I really wanna look at whether in a PhD program in your life, we can gain anything, besides the weirdness, we can gain anything from the PhD decluttering component. And there is a literature there on decluttering in the PhD. So I've picked five bits for your consideration to just see if it might simplify or clarify your life in some form. Now these five strategies I'm going to offer are not involving joy. I know that will come as a surprise to you store like royalty, we're not going there, but an exploration about how maybe to declutter the dissertation, declutter the PhD. Now, the KonMari method is about selecting not a room, but a particular category and trying to declutter that. We're gonna try and do a little bit of that, so we're gonna use the method in some form, but not really, because I wanna create quick change for you if I can. So let's go to number one, which I think is probably the most important, and the reason I'm back in my home office to record this vlog. Firstly, declutter the workspace and indeed the office desk. So whether you're at a university, so you decide to do your research work at a university, or whether you have a home office, or indeed your home office is the kitchen table before the kids get home, it is important that we think about this office or table space. Because working at an office desk is integral to thinking about task management, and time management. If you get the desk right, then the tasks and the time you deploy in your doctorate will be simplified and clarified. So as you can see, and, and by the way, you know, my office desk, which you all see in other vlogs, I never do any research of any kind at that desk. When I'm drafting, when I'm editing, let alone when I'm doing any of my actual research, I don't do any of that at work. It is a consultation office in many ways. I answer emails there and I see people. That's all I do. This this desk and this office in which we are doing this filming today, this is where I write books. This is where I write articles. This is where I write journalism. This is where I do the business. And I've had this desk for about 12 years and it's really not a desk. It has no drawers. It's basically about four foot by about two and a half, three foot of plywood. Very cheap. I had to put it together. I'm very bad at putting things together so it's slightly wonky, but it's just basically a flat surface, no drawers, nothing. And everything I've done, I've written about 10 books on this desk. So what I do and how I frame this desk is it only has two objects on it. In fact, one is still on the desk. You can't see it, it's out of shot. But I have my computer 
on this desk and the current task, whatever I'm doing. So I have a report, some papers, an article, or I have my iPad where I'm reading an electronic book. So there's no multitasking in this office of any kind. Here is my computer, here is the paper, here is the iPad on which I'm working. So I prepped this, for example, the night before. Here is the document I'm going to put into and think about in relation, relation to this research project. Here it is. There's the computer. On we go. Nothing else exists on the desk. So that means I have a completely clean desk most of the time. And when those papers are finished, so after I've done my job in the morning, I simply put those papers in the recycling and then move to the next task. So as you can see, organize your desk so you are completing one task at a time. No multitasking. Control the space, control the time, control the task. And when it's done, clear the decks, move to the next task. And please remember, most of the stuff on your desk absolutely should not be there. So just get rid of it. Two, really important one, note taking note-taking. Now, we did a very early vlog, I think, on note-taking, and I am obsessed by note-taking. I think note-taking is the foundation of all research. A lot of academic integrity, research integrity issues would be resolved, managed, wouldn't appear if people just did their notes properly. Because what notes do is they organize knowledge. Now, I organize all my notes in a single folder on my computer that's called, I know this will come as a surprise to you, Notes. And under that folder are 351, currently, 351 files, each with a single title. So whatever the notes are on, so creative industries, regional development, what else have we got, food, tourism, for example, declutter, there's now a declutter note series, but there's, there's 351 of them, right? And I started those collections, those files of notes, in 1991. So those notes are now organized by subject. You can imagine there's one. So my, uh, my note collection on Google, for example, I've written a lot of books on Google and information literacy, that's 890 pages of notes in that single Google file alone. So whenever I read a new area, which I read a new area most weeks, I open a new file and on we go. So whether it's class, whether it's work, whether it's lifestyle, pick a topic and I pretty well have a file on it. So this is great. Whenever I get a request for papers or a journal article or I'm thinking of applying for a grant or an award, I go to my notes folder and say, what have I got? on that topic. What have I right now got on this topic? And invariably there is something. So the advantage of having those notes is I know what I know and then I know what I don't know and I go and find what I don't know. So I'm organized. I'm completely organized digitally and in terms of my knowledge system. So declutter your hard drives, declutter your notes. Don't have notes everywhere on multiple platforms, some bits of paper and stuff, stuff in your handbag. Don't do that. Have a folder, have a series of files and get on with it. And it works incredibly well, can I say. I can certainly recommend it. Three, okay, we're getting into emotional decluttering, right? So much of this decluttering movement is about sort of vague emotions, right? Like joy or community, right? And, you know, it's all a bit weird for me. You know, I think a lot of stuff's a bit hippie. But I'm not suggesting that emotions aren't important or indeed certainly important to a PhD. Emotions are absolutely crucial to a PhD. But it ain't about joy and stuff. It's about honesty it's about truth and sharing your truth with others, telling that truth. So what I want you to do in terms of decluttering your emotions is tell the truth about your PhD to your partner, to your kids, to your parents. Talk about what is required. Talk about the demands, the strengths, the weaknesses, the stresses. Do all of that, but I want you to go a step further. I want you to talk about your fears, but I also then want you to talk about your plan to completion. It takes a family to complete a PhD. So therefore, share that truth 
with your family, but also explain how you will finish that thesis from that truth. So be honest, present a plan and share it and talk through it. Be accountable is what I'm suggesting. Don't be harder on yourself than you need to be, but be honest. So this is not about joy. This is about rigor. This is about clarity. And this is about honesty. Four, downsizing. Okay. This is an important truth for me. And whenever I'm interviewing or talking with people who are thinking of doing a PhD, particularly if they're busy in full-time work, family, caring responsibilities, this is the most important variable I discuss with them. You cannot add a PhD to an already full life. I'll say that again. You can't add a PhD to an already full life. If you're going to do a PhD and you are flat out busy, you are going to have to structurally remove something from your life before you put a PhD into that life. So something has to go for you to be doing this doctorate. And it's not a matter of efficiency, it's a matter of structure and structures. That's how you're going to finish. So something has to go if something is to be added. So when I'm interviewing you, I'll say, well, what are, you know, you're busy, you're absolutely busy. What are you going to change? What are you going to remove? What are you going to reduce? What are you going to downsize to be able to do a PhD? Okay, five. Sleep well sleep well. <laughs> Everything commences in the bedroom. I'm not talking about conception. Really, I'm not. I'm not talking about sex. Really, I'm not. But sleep really, really matters. You can't do a PhD unless you sort your sleep out. And that means get your phone, get your iPad, get your digital stuff, out of the bedroom. Remember, I wrote a book called Digital Dieting. Do it. You are going to be completely dysfunctional in life if you can't sleep well. So wake up well and then organize your day. So the bedroom really matters. Get everything out of your bedroom except your bed, you, and your partner. Now your partner may be optional if they're actually disrupting your sleep. That's how important sleep is. Don't have stuff in your bedroom. Don't have the ping ping, don't do it. Nothing should interrupt your sleep. A successful life starts with successful sleeping. So look at your space. Don't look for joy. Be ruthless and go, what stuff's in here that does not need to be in here? This is important. So anything that's interrupting your space and time, get it out of the bedroom. And from then on, you can manage your life when you manage your sleep. Now, as you can see, this, this is quite important to me. Uh, my sleep is pretty complicated, pretty messed up. And it get, gets, can I say, messed up quite a lot. Uh, it's been pretty messed up, actually, in the last three months because I've been reading eight to ten theses a week. And, you know, I can very easily manage one all-nighter a week and it doesn't impact on me too much. But I've been doing two and then I reach sort of in December, January, three all-nighters uh, a week to try and get students through. And I didn't quite know where I was, to be honest with you, to be frank. So I had to do something structural. So I've discovered something structural too. And it is an Apple app that I put on the iPad called Bedtime, which I really recommend to you. If you're all a bit messed up at the moment, and I was messed up. I was, I mean, I'm pretty messed up anyway in terms of start and stop time, but I lost all pattern. So the Apple app Bedtime really helped me. I've put it on the iPad, not in the bedroom. I've put it in the bathroom that's adjacent to it. And I close the door, but I can hear it wake me up. So it organizes the time you go to bed and the time you wake up and it has this beautiful, gentle way of waking you up. So actually that app sorted me out, not in the bedroom, in the bathroom. So I have to get up and turn it off. So I do recommend that, very, very useful. So start to declutter your time, keep your sleeping environment simple. Okay, so this year decluttering is a fashion. But the focus for us is not on joy in a doctoral program. It's on relevance and meaningfulness. 
How do we render your PhD more meaningful? So let's think about academic clutter. Wow, there's a lot of it. Let's think about PhD clutter. Wow, there's a lot of it. What is impending and hurting the way you grow? What is, what is, what's worrying you that's coming in the future? What is cluttering the way in which you're thinking about the next task you have to complete? So what today's vlog has been about is watching the paper. Make sure the paper's in control. Watching your digital files. Ensuring that your notes are in order. And think about focusing on a single task and deploying and performing that single task through your space, like your office desk. But also think about your digital space. Think about how you can declutter it. So while you're doing your work, don't have your emails up. Don't have Facebook up. Don't have Twitter up. Do your task and then choose to go on social media. So start to simplify your digital spaces. Everything you do is about completing one task at a time. Multitasking is nonsense. All the studies show this. Don't try and do it. One task, one step at a time, will create a completed PhD. So let's clean up your space, your brain space as well. Not through joy, but through meaning, through relevance, and yes, through importance. Think about organisation. Think about simplicity. That's your priority. That's your focus. I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out. Wow.